My name is Philip. I'm an architecture student from the Philippines and welcome to my first stream ever. I wanted to greet you and start my first stream with my real voice but sadly, I have no microphone to work with and my earphones mic wasn't helping me either. Today, I want to discuss my plans for the future. I wanted to show you guys what I have been working for for the past week and yeah. Currently a scratch, but I'm willing to risk for this. No timeline yet but I'll try to make this happen this year. Two huge projects underway, here I present. Atheoclipsado is an all-around customer service centered around architecture, arts, and design, with a mix of other freelance services like paper writing, video editing, etc. Here's my a bit of my proposal. Why Eclipsado? Eclipsado means to our chine in Spanish. The name Eclipsado serves to assure our clients and customers that our service is out and overshadow their expectations. The logo. The logo signifies Eclipsado's relationship with its clients. The shaded facade of the house represents the vision of the clients, while the framework next to it represents the effort we put in our services to concretize our clients' vision. Hand in hand, we work, our clients pose their ideas, Eclipsado makes them possible, and even better. Unique designs, unique you. This tagline provides our clients and customers the assurance that their ideas and individuality are embodied in our design. We in Eclipsado are committed to turn ideas and visions into reality. Under the parent org, we have at Alf Eclipsado, which is a brand centered around gaming and entertainment. I'll be looking for people interested to join the pack soon with some incredible perks like in-game credits and exclusive merch wolf face. I'll be streaming on Twitch soon to always. When I get Streamlabs premiums, I will use the edits that I did. Also next time, I will show you how I made them for free. That's all I have for now but this is not the end. I will update you guys every week with my plans in the future. I hope you guys stick with me till we meet our goal. Anyways guys, I wanna watch this with you because this helped me with my mindset to start making things possible. Just sit back and relax and let's watch together. The title of the video is Stoicism, Become Undefeatable by Aperture, check them out on YouTube. In the city of Cyprus in 300 BC, there lived a very wealthy trader called Zeno. While on a voyage from Phoenicia to Piraeus, his boat sank along with all of his cargo. Because of that single event, an event that was entirely out of Zeno's or anyone's control, this very wealthy man suddenly became poor in an instant. Imagine you were Zeno. How would you react to your entire life's work getting flushed down the drain by the sheer force of nature? What is the proper reaction? Would you be angry? Sad? Would you feel life has cheated you? For most of us, these would all be normal reactions. But not for Zeno, the father of Stoicism. One small change lasts an eternity, and one small reframing of your mindset can cascade into larger and more impactful changes later down the line. The core of Stoicism is the very definition of acceptance and indifference. Today, People inadvertently view Stoics as people who cannot be broken, people who don't often linger to the emotional extremes, going through things like fits of rage or bouts of anxiety. But the original idea behind Stoicism was much more than that. Rather than just a way to describe people who are unemotional, Stoicism was a way to view, describe, and understand the world. It was a way of life, and that way of life has lasted for centuries. Stoic philosophy can be applied to situations today the same way it was applied thousands of years ago and its benefits are just as impactful. Stoicism allows us to process these negative emotions from negative experiences, and turn them into the thoughts that give us a unique perspective of the world. So why do so many people adopt Stoicism as a way of life?
In a world full of unexpected turns of events, our emotions can tend to get in the way of things. In reality, we don't really get sad because bad things happen to us, we get sad because unexpected bad things happen to us. Rain is a good thing. It helps to water our plants, provides water for livestock, and keeps the temperature cool and humid. But the truth is, when that dark cloud catches you outside without an umbrella, it's never a good experience. So why don't we start crying once it starts to rain? It's because although the situation is bad, we've learned to expect rain. It's something that is unavoidable. We can't control the weather. Although it sucks, the rain passes and the light returns. Stoicism teaches us that in the same way, we should expect that everything bad that can happen will happen. Picture the worst outcome, and be content knowing it could happen. One of the stoic exercises is known as voluntary discomfort, an exercise aimed at increasing feelings of gratitude. Sleep on the floor of your kitchen, taking cold showers when you normally take hot ones, eat nothing but potatoes for a few days, things like this. This exercise helps you to understand that no matter how hard it gets, you'll still survive and potentially thrive if your mindset is right. By being able to withstand these uncomfortable situations, we indirectly prepare our mental for future misfortunes. With the current state of the world where advertisements are constantly being shoved down our throats, we're made to believe that if we don't have the next best thing, look a certain way, or make a certain amount of money, that we will never be happy. This message is more important now than ever. We enter the world not knowing much of anything. We grow up being taught things at home, in school, and by observing the world for ourselves. The thing is, a lot of times, all three of these sources of knowledge teach us in different ways. The question is, do we need to internalize all of this knowledge? If we do, we could unknowingly be setting unrealistic expectations for our lives, leaving us ultimately disappointed and unsatisfied in the end. That's no way to live. We should instead focus on improving ourselves, for ourselves. We should do things for ourselves and only for that reason. Attaching any external hope or secondary attachments to the actions we take almost always lead to disappointment. Most of the time, we end up trying to fulfill that emptiness with external things. Blowing all your money on a fancy car, a house, or even starting a family. Sometimes we do all of these things for their external value and not their internal value. But Stoicism teaches that if you approach life this way, you place your happiness in the hands of external forces. Forces that can always fail. Cars almost always break down. Natural disasters wipe away entire cities. And divorce rates climb higher and higher each year. But even the free things in life come at a cost. The cost of space, both physical and mental. As Seneca once wrote, Learning to live with less will create space in your life for the things that truly matter to you. Instead, we must place our happiness on our intrinsic value as humans and on nothing we have or can physically acquire. We must choose to do our best to keep a cool head, regardless of what life throws at us. Because regardless of what it is we want, at the end of the day, we don't have any control over the majority of things that happen to us, but we do have all the control over how we react to those things. That is the dichotomy of control, the most important principle in Stoic philosophy. Stoics teach that we must learn to separate what we control from what we cannot control. We need to determine our value not from things we can't control, but from the things we can. Striving towards goals is a good trait, but breaking down when those things don't go your way is, in a Stoic's point of view, useless. Making YouTube videos is, well, a lot easier than being a Roman Emperor, but it can still prove to be challenging sometimes. First you must form your idea, which takes forever, then research that idea. Scrap it because it sucks. Start over, script the video, create the video, edit it, make the title, thumbnail, and everything else before you hit upload. Everything up until the point where you click upload is all up to you. However, once you click that upload button, the power shifts to the YouTube algorithm. Still, a lot of people judge the success of their YouTube channel or Instagram account based on how many views and subscribers or followers they have. Metrics of which, for the most part, are beyond your control. Stoics teach that instead, you should judge the success of your work based on the amount of effort you put in, and not on the outcome of your external hopes. Trust the process. Think about a person who has been working hard at their job for the past six months. He now feels he deserves a promotion, and so he walks up to his boss with his performance report. The boss says thanks, doesn't grant him the promotion, and he goes home thinking he must suck at his job. He doesn't consider that the boss might have simply woken up angry, someone else might have been better qualified at the time. Or maybe the company was just losing money and couldn't afford it. 
He doesn't know the reason, but he's still upset. If he simply placed his value on the quality of the performance report he turned in, kept doing what he was doing to earn the promotion he wanted, he could have been much happier overall. With the right perspective, his goal wouldn't have been diminished, but just postponed. It's this reframing of your mindset that is crucial. A true stoic does not view their successes based on the financial gain of their ventures, but is comforted by the fact that they can live a comfortable life without all the things money can buy. Even in the darkest of situations, we can fill our lives with meaning and happiness by simply finding out what that purpose is. As many of us know though, this is easier said than done. It's a process, much like everything else. We have to rewire the way we think, out with the old, in with the new. To fix our problems with happiness, we must practice self-worth. By redirecting our definition of value to the things that we can control, we can stop getting fixated on the things we cannot control. And overall, we can lead a much happier and more fulfilling life. Stoicism helps us steer through past and present storms into calmer and more peaceful waters. And if our ship sinks and we all drown, we can take peace in the fact that we lived a good life, albeit not as long as we had hoped. Because remember, everything has an end. Check out Aperture's YouTube channel for more videos like this. Also guys check out my YouTube channel as well. I'll be uploading my stream highlights there. My goal for next week is to reach 100 subscribers. My links are down in the descriptions below. Check them out.